to those who are already finished uh, with the task, uh, kindly uh, send the feedback here on the chat box. Yeah, two more minutes, please. No. Are we all good? Nasundan niyo ba? Pag kayo may tanong, just ask the question in the chat box or right here. How to get the value of locations, okay? Let me check on how to get the value of locations. So let's, let's go back here in my... Yan. So itong locations natin, let me go back. In our locations, uh, it is based on the locality name. So dito kung makikita natin, Bangued, Tubo, Luna, Apayao. Ang daming Luna, Apayao, ang daming Baguio City. But we would like to count only the distinct. So ilan ba yung distinct municipalities? And to do that, kailangan natin... Um, okay. So if you edit, click on the scorecard and then... Uh, check on the metrics. Dito meron kayong FX. It's a formula. Click on the locations. That's the name of the location. We will use the count distinct and then use the locality name. So let me do that again. Count. Just type count. Merong lalabas dito na choices. Count distinct. And in between the two parentheses, ano ang binibilang ko? Yung locality name. Locality name. Click. Okay. Make sure you get a green check here that tells us, okay, we get the right uh, formula and then apply. And then you should be able to get the 85. So para para tayong 85 because we have the same uh, resource, uh, same data set. Sir okay, Alan, uh, your screen is yes. not shared po. Jing? Your screen is not shared po. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. Let me repeat again. All right, so one more time for the location. So doon sa location, may nagtanong kasi. No? So in the location, um, we are going to count how many municipalities actually are there. Distinct lang. Kasi itong Luna Apayaw na ulit-ulit ito, Bangued. So, bibilangin natin kung ilan. So, it's under the column locality name. And to do that, you click on the locations that we have created and then click on the edit under the metrics. Itong function, ah, function. And then, of course, you have the right name there. And then you use count distinct. When you type something, you have an auto-suggest. 
So the most appropriate among the suggestions here is count distinct. And in between the two parentheses, ano yung binibilang natin is locality name. Click, type locality, and then just select this one. Okay? So make sure you get the green uh, check and then apply. Okay. And then yun na yun. So makukuha dapat natin siya. Alright, nakuha na daw. So do we have other questions there, Jing? Di ko masyadong nakikita. Padana. Okay, good. So let's move on to our next. Nakulayan nyo na rin kahit pa paano. Uh, let me go back to my presentation. Ah, nakikita yung presentation ko, Jing? Yes, Sir Alan. Yeah, okay. Sige. So, um, scorecards. Tapos na tayong demo. And then let's go to custom formulas. Ito yun. Um, these are a few, no, just actually two functions or formulas that we'll be using today. One is concatenation, one is the if. Unahin natin yung if condition. So if is a function that returns a true result if the condition is true. Ang condition, compare mo lang yung dalawang values. No? Uh, equal, not equal, greater than, less than. So in this example, you have three parameters. Para, sa mga non-programmers, ang tawag dito parameter. First parameter is your condition. Second parameter is the true result. Third parameter is else result separated by comma sign. Okay? So ang first parameter natin, ito yung condition mismo. It's a comparison between two values. Is the accepted equal to the value of yes? If it's yes, ang value niya ay 1, otherwise 0. Bakit ginawa natin ng 1? Kasi gusto nating isum later. Yung column na yun, we would like to sum uh, all the values of 1. That will represent how many sides are accepted. Okay. Itong pangalawa is gagamitin natin uh, right after this. Ito yung concatenation. It returns a text that is 1. Uh, that is the concatenation of two or more fields or expressions. Okay. Uh, tatlong expression or more expressions to. So in this example, tatlo lang ginamit ko. Expression 1, expression 2, and expression 3. Kasi I mentioned a while ago that in, in the... This one. Yung latitude and longitude kailangan, it should be a combination of your latitude the first separated by a comma sign plus the longitude that constitutes the coordinate para maiplot natin siya. For now, you only have latitude and longitude as a value here. Okay? And that is not a coordinate. It's, in fact, just a number. Okay? So, pupuntahan natin yung portion na yun. So, gagamitin natin ito. So, to concatenate, pagdudugtungin ko yung field na latitude, comma, tapos yung symbol na comma sign. So pagka mga string, kailangan it has to be uh, placed in a uh, quote and quote. Where is my ano na? Yan. Dapat naka quote and quote siya. Okay? Um, and then, comma, the third value is longitude. So alam nyo na kung anong itsura nito pag pinagdugtong-dugtong mo yan. Concatenation. Okay, so let's go. Right, again. Click on the Luzon Wi-Fi LC1. Click on the edit data source. Okay, balikan natin itong dimensions natin. Itataas ko lang ah. And then magdadagdag tayo ng isang field here. Add a field. Okay. And then the field name is called coordinate. Coordinate. Ang value niya is concat. Okay, concat. Ano yung unang value is the latitude, comma sign, and then quote and quote. Sa gitna ng dalawang quote is another comma sign, si comma or comma, comma, and longitude. Ayan. Okay, so wait until it gives me a check mark. Okay, and then save. So that should add one more 
field. It's a calculated field. Where is that? Uh, it should be here. Hindi siya na-update, no? So, done mo na ako. Uh, let me go back. Ayun, coordinate. Um, be patient sa ano, ah, sa Google Data Studio. Uh, it take some time to refresh kasi online siya and uh, a lot of processing is happening behind the scenes. So sometimes you have to refresh. Okay? Dito merong uh, refresh dito sa may tabi ng view. Okay. So what shall I do now with the coordinate? Alam ko that this is a, uh, a JO data already and I have to change the value from text to JO. And it's you see, pwede kayong, pag ang inilagay mo is an address or a country, pwede yung mga yan as a, a geo values. So, but for now, it's a latitude and a longitude. Click. Okay. You are changing coordinates from text to latitude. Are you sure? I'm very sure. So, continue. So, nagpalit na yung values niya. Okay. So, gagamitin natin yan uh, later on. Right. So let's move on to the next. Yeah, I think you're doing this again. Let's move on to the next. Uh, it's actually a recap already. Am I too fast? Okay. Uh, let's build this one. Susunod na gagawin natin ay yung charts. Itong tatlong charts na to. So one, one of the charts here is a pie chart or a donut chart that represents the distribution of Wi-Fi sites in three regions. The second chart, ito naman ay uh, within the regions, one car and two, how many are active and how many are expired. And in the last one is the distribution uh, between three regions and uh, site type. Saan sila na ilagay? Sa mga HEIs ba? Uh, health center? Health center? Uh, I don't know what is HSP. COVID areas, etc. Okay, so yan na. Objective natin. Itong gagawin natin. And let's go ahead and do that in our uh, Wi-Fi monitoring report. So add the chart. Pie chart or donut chart, it's just a visualization. Click. Okay. And uh, let's change first the style. So, umpisa pa lang ayusin na natin yung style. Ano, okay lang. Sige, mamaya na yung style. So, anong kailangan natin i-represent dito is the... Uh, ang dimension, ang dimension na kailangan natin ay yung regional offices. So take note, let's go here in the dimension. Let's change this dimension here. Click on the site code. This should be regional. Okay. Region. Yan. So that gives us an understanding already of the region. And the record count is this one. Then let's change the uh, style. And then from the style, I'll put that the title should be on top. Although yung, yung example natin sa baba, kaya lang pag marami kasi yung label, nagkukulang yung list sa baba. So for this example, gawin ko na lang siyang nasa, nasa taas. Okay? So that's how you create. Very simple. Now, uh, to appreciate this further, dagdagan ko pa siya ng, dagdag ko na rin yung ano, table. So add, I'm sorry, mali, mali, not add data. It should be add chart. Add a chart and then table, yung pangatlo, with heat map. Okay? Let's add a heat map below. Right? And then the things that I would like to see here are the region plus idagdag ko rin yung kanyang uh, province. 
Okay, so I now have region and province and then the record count. So the heat map um, will give you, you know, some color coding, yung higher intensity, mas dark, mas marami, and yung mas uh, lighter, mas konti ang values niya. So this is interactive already. If I will click on one region, the pink one is region 2, it will only show region 2, right? Isn't that amazing? Ang ganda. Uh, kaya uh, very useful. Lalong lalo sa mga office uh, office workers natin who are doing lots of their reports. So if I click on one area, the car, it will only show me the provinces in Region 1. Okay? Sige. Balikan ko lang yung coordinate mamaya. So yung coordinate is pinag-concat natin. Hindi pa naman natin gagamitin. Right. So let's continue. Uh, in addition to that, pwede akong mag-drill down dito. Okay. So paano yung drill down? Gusto ko per province siya. Gusto ko sana from regional level. Look at this. Ha? Look at this. In our data set, ito, ang, ang bawat isang region is comprised of different provinces. No? So si Abra belongs to CAR. Apeo belongs to CAR. No? Uh, it's obvious. So if you look at one, one row, kung gusto ko lang makita yung mga nasa Abra provinces lang, so i dapat i-display niya yung mga values under this Abra uh, area. Okay? So I could drill down from region down to the province. No? para mas specific. To add that, in the dimension, I will check on this, this slider for drill down, idadagdag ko yung province. Okay. So, let's see. If uh, Nagkaroon na ako ngayon dito ng drill down from regions to province. If I will click this, you see, I can see all the provinces based per province naman siya and if i will click on the one one province alone pangasinan click ito para makulay naman siya isabela okay so i can only see isabela there are 50 in isabela right so i could drill up to the region and drill down to the province provincial level lang siya di ba so, hindi mo magagawa sa excel yan no Hindi mo rin magagawa sa, uh, you know, you cannot easily do that using any programming language. But uh, thankfully, Google Analytics or Google Data Studio is capable of doing that. And let's continue. So meron akong chart. So this time, uh, I'm looking for the, the active sites naman siya. So active sites, add chart. This time, a bar chart. Bakit bar chart? Kasi gusto ko malaman yung number kasi a very specific ako doon sa level niya. So that's why I'm using a bar chart. In a pie chart, I'm I'm you are concerned on the distribution, the percentage. In totality, gaano karami ang napunta kay region car. So looking at this map, more almost half. So that's how I use the pie chart. But this time I'm going to use the uh, bar chart because I would like to see the level. How many? I would like to see the quantity. So, may, mayroong reset dito sa taas to return it back to its original form. So, reset. Ayan. Okay. Mamamaya na yung arrangement. So, chart tayo. So, this time, let's analyze. Let's go back. So, accepted sites. Uh, ito pala yung mga active sites. Again, there are two values, expired and active. So ito ang aking magiging uh, tawag dito, dimension. Ito ang aking magiging metrics ngayon. So kung ilan siya. So here, ang aking dimension is region. Kung gusto mong magkaroon ng drill down pa rin, dagdagan mo pa rin siya. Drill down plus province. So let's do that para consistent tayo. And then 
uh, from each province. Actually, pwede mo pang dagdagan yan, ano? But uh, for this discussion, yan lang muna. Let's do go to this breakdown. Itong isang, this one bar here. So how would you like to break it down? We would like to break it down into how many are active and how many are expired. Okay, so that is my dimension. Breakdown dimension is represented by the contract status. Okay. Right, it takes a little time. Ayan, so dalawang column siya. Ngayon, if I'm going to view this, i-view ko siya, click on the view para mas malaki. So if I will click on region car, Ayan. So, walang expired sa region car. So, all of them are, ano, sa blue yata. Car pala ito. Wrong pala to Region 1 pala yung blue. Sorry. Because Pangasinan. See? You could see that there are two um, bars here. And look at the scorecards. Nagbabago din siya. So, in the car region, you only have, you only have, see? 145. Tama nga ba? So 61 plus 37 plus 24, 12, 8, and 3. That constitutes the 145 total sites. Out of the regions, 20 lamang na distinct locations yan. 129 ng active, 16 and accepted sites. Oh, di ba? When, when my boss asked me, oh, ilan dyan? Ano ba yung car na? Ano ba yung mga expired na, na, ano, na sites na yan so that we could visit them and uh, take a look at the the contract. Uh, eto sir, click on the car. Uh, nandyan sa Abra yan. Da lahat na sa Abra. 16 sites ang nandoon sa Abra. Expired 16 sites. ba? And then sana you could drill down where where exactly sa mapa. Pwede nating makita yan later. So ilalagay natin sa map. And you could pinpoint very precise where are these records. Diba? Pero kung ito lang, kung tinatanong ka dito, uh, you look at this Excel sheet. So ilan ang expired? Sagurin ka sir, tabilang. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Diba? It's cumbersome. It's, um, you know, not practical and not easy. Okay. Edit again. Balik ako sa edit mode. And then the sizes, you have to change this later para magkasya. Uh -uh. Oops, sorry. And then the last one is, the last one is this, the site type. Site types. So I will add another chart. Column chart. I'll use a stock uh, column chart. No? Bakit stock naman? Okay. Um, sa isang column already, I could represent how many sites were deployed in what type? HEI, COVID center. Yan, makikita ko na. So, this uh, kind of chart is appropriate if you have multiple dimensions that you are working with. Okay. So, balikan natin. Ang gusto ko lang naman na makita ay yung sa per region or per province, how, what is the distribution in terms of uh, site type. Okay. So, here I'm going to go to the dimension. I will have to drill down and add a province as the region again but i have to exchange position mauna muna si region bago province and then ang aking breakdown di dimension is site type site type okay so there is your uh, site type you can easily alter the the type of chart whether it's stock or um, clustered yata yun, or non-stock. So you go to style and then uncheck this one, stock bars. 
So, magiging ganyan siya. Kung check on and check. Okay? So, it's a preference on your part. Kung papano. Right? So, let's view once again. And then, very cluttered. Mukhang hindi siya maganda. Kasi, ano. So, re let's reset the values. Take note, when I reset it, the initial drill down value is province na kaagad. Kung ayaw mo yan, dapat all of them should start with region and then there's something wrong. So let's go back. Click on this and then yung ating uh, default, yun, default drill down level, it should be region. Default drill down level. Okay. Ayan. Para car, two, and ano. So may numbers. Hindi mo rin lang din na mababasa yung mga numbers. So better remove the numbers there. Uh, because it's cluttering. So remove the data labels. Ayan. Ganyan lang muna for now. Okay. So you have to arrange this afterwards. So again, let's see. Because this is interactive, if I'm going to click on one particular color here, this one, all of the items are automatically updated. So there are total of 10 sites in this specific um, type, which is PHS under car, PHS under car, there are 10 sites, 4 locations, 10 active sites, and walang expired. And you can see it from here. There are 7 in Benguet and 3 in Ifugao. That constitute your, your numbers. Okay? Sige. Um, I'm going to let you finish this part. Habang dinidesign ko siya, uh, uh, kompleta nyo na rin. No? So, papaltan ko lang ng sizes. So, yung size kasi dapat... Uh, Magkakasay siya. Ang um, ka-alignment, alignment lang to. This is alignment. Uh -huh. You can use the... Okay, resize ng konti. And then this. Okay, so the bar, you remove the grid line. It's not really good looking style. And then you remove the grid on the bar. Bar chart. Uh -huh. The grid. I think this one is the grid color, axis color, uh, chart border, uh, grid color. I think the grid color is transparent. Okay. That would also re remove the grid color here. And the color is transparent, right? So it's better. And I will add borders to all of them. Select mo na lang siya, lahat, lahat. And then style. And I will add a border for each of these. Background and border. So the line is almost black. And the the width is one solid okay yeah that's it we should be able to finish by 11 pala Okay, so let's have another five, six minutes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Questions?
five minutes left so yeah you should be done with the charts already and then final na tong ating uh, uh, google maps and uh, two more slides under the second page Those who are already done in finishing uh, the charts, kindly send us a feedback here on uh, the chat box. So, Two minutes left. Last one minute. Thirty seconds.
Yeah, okay. And uh, we're back. So hopefully natapos nyo na yung control, ano, scorecards, charts. Meron pa pala tayong controls, ano. And then uh, tables and uh, uh, Google Maps. Okay? So let's proceed to our Google Maps this time. So ito yung output natin sa Google Maps. Ah. Um, so let, let's go back here. Okay. Um, there was a question here later uh, a while ago. How did we do the coordinates? So, kailangan kasi natin ng coordinates doon sa Google Maps. And if I'm going to go back to my data set, I just have to click on this uh, pencil to edit the data source and then check on this. Meron na akong coordinate na additional. No? So, how did I do that? Uh, I, let me re remove that one. Ah. Remove the coordinates. Wala pa naman akong pinaggamitan, so it's okay. So I will have to add the field. And the name of that field is coordinate. Coordinates. And uh, the formula is concat. We're going to add the... Latitude and longitude plus the comma sign. So concat the latitude first, followed by a comma sign, uh, quote and quote comma, and then another comma sign. So tatlong parameters na yan, latitude, yung comma, and then yung longitude. Okay. So that should give me a correct coordinate save calculated field save but it's not showing on my uh, available fields yet so i have to click on done and get back to that uh, to have some kind of refresh and there's the coordinate Okay, the next thing that I have to do is to make that as a coordinate, not as a text. Let's change the type from text to JO to latitude and longitude. The longitude, okay. So, meron na ako. So, yun ang gagamitin natin ngayon sa ating map. Right, so, um, almost there. Iusod ko lang ng konti para may paglagyan ng map. So let's add the map now. Add Google Maps. So there will be three maps here. Bubble, uh, field map, and heat map. Ba bubble map ang gagamitin natin. Kasi, bakit bubble map? Yeah. Because the coordinates are unique. No? So each location have its unique uh, coordinates. So, ang isang unique location will be represented by one bubble. Okay? In fact, kung yung isang location sana can be measured in terms of its size. No? So, ang isang location ay mas malaki kesa iba. You could also use bubble with, uh, with a dimension for size uh, to represent na ito, mas malaking circle, mas malaking community. Mas maliit na circle, mas maliit na, na community. Okay? The other map is uh, field map. You know, parang kumbaga uh, the map of Baguio City and then you have an intensity of color pag mas darker siya, mas heavily populated. Pag lighter color, mas densely populated or sparsely populated, ganon. So field map naman yon. But um, no, we don't have, um, we don't measure the population. So it's not appropriate here. Kaya dapat bubble map. Okay. So what do we fill up here? So in fact, ano niya, hinanap na niya yung, yung field location because there is only one geo data there. It actually automatically added that as our location. Yun yung coordinate. Pero pag hindi, kailangan piliin mo dito. No? So nandyan yung world map. So okay. Para halos okay na ito eh. Okay. Let's just add for a dimension. So tooltip. Pag ka nag... If I go hover it, ano ang lalabas dapat? So uh, in the tooltip, I would say uh, this is the the um, if it's uh, ano, if it is expired or not. So contract of status, okay? 
So if I'm going to hover it, sasabihin niya kung ito ay expired or or hindi. Okay, active, active, lahat yan active, tatlo lang kasi yung ano eh. Tatlo lang yung expired. Uh, 16 lang yung expired. Okay? Next. In our size, hindi ko gagamitin sa itong size because we don't uh, measure the site in terms of size. But the color I will do, I will use the site type as the color para may color coding siya. Okay. Ayan. And let's see. So if I'm going to check on reset, muna. If I'm going to check on region 2, okay. there are three provinces where we have Wi-Fi sites, uh, installations, Cagayan, Sabela, Nueva Vizcaya. So you can see all of them are blue. If I'm going to click on one item here, nasaan yung mga HEIs? What is an HEI color here? It's blue. Wag na blue. Uh, ito lang, yung NGA, color pink. So NGA, yeah, it's it's here, but but it's not showing the color, ano? So NGA, I nasa blue kasi siya. The site type is the breakdown dimension and the metrics, the sort. Balikan ko lang ah. The size, the color is the site type. So let me see. It should show us some colors because the color puro active kasi siya, no? Mm. It's not using... Yeah, anyway, sige. So you can see... Um, if if you're going to click on one area only, siya sabi ko na saan. So, ito. There are only four. Uh, in that one. So, in fact, nag sa ilagan lang ang meron siya. Right? So that's how interactive it is, no? So that's how the Google Map works. So. Everything here are connected, interconnected with each other, whether you drill down or drill up, uh, the rest of the records are, are affected. And the good thing about it is you could actually do that as a presentation. So pwede natin i-present. Okay. And then you could uh, move on to different pages of this uh, site. So page one and our page two. And it's an interactive. And... Another good thing is you can share. So that's what I'm asking from every one of you. Know, if you could uh, share uh, this here or you could share that to other people. When you share, you could just copy the link and paste it here and then you can see. Na, para makita ng iba. So hindi mo na kailangang isend. Or, although you could... You could um, you could save this as a PDF. Okay, so we're done with the Google uh, Google Maps. Just two more for the pages. Okay. So if I'm done, if you're done, I'm going to continue now. So for the pages, you have two pages here, untitled pages. Uh, of course, it's not good if you have an untitled page here. We should be able to rename this one. So let's go back and edit the name. Click on this. And then uh, let's wait. I think I. You click on this page here, the manage pages, or you go to page or manage pages, manage pages, click, and then you have on the other side, you have your report pages. The first is my main page. 
this is the main and the second is the uh, reports or the table is where the table is and then i could add one more header add a sec add a header and make that as the first header I arrange lang natin siya oops yun sumama din siya so the header is something that will appear on this uh, side no so it's not a header i would say navigation navigation menu Now, if we are going to view it, so you will see navigation menu as your header, the main table, and the table right here. The main menu, rather, and then the table here. Okay? So that's how you edit the pages. And then let's continue adding one more page. So let, let's add one more page. So page, new page. So in the third, I could actually swap it. Let's swap it to make it number two. You're not, you know. So yung, yung untitled page natin, this is the uh, pivot report. Okay, and then do some arrangement. So the second, the second, yeah. So what we are going to do now on the second page, I to add a pivot table. No, so this pivot table will give us more details on our in on the information that we have. So move on to add the chart, and then go to pivot table at the bottom. So pivot table, click. Parang Excel din siya, but here you could see see the details. No? So I have a region and the count per region. So region with the total values in here. But I would like to add one more like the HEI. I would like to classify that by type. So site type and add. Okay. Okay. And per region, I will add to add the region. Uh, arrange that uh, accordingly. So region first, or the site code. I don't need the site code. Okay. So for region one, see, for region one, it's classified according to HEIs. For region car, it's classified according to the, the type, I'm sorry, site type. And region car is classified, or region two is classified according to this one. So you could add... Um, dimensions into your table for more precise uh, figures here in terms of row and column rows and columns okay and if i'm interested in um let's say how many are up and status let's go to the status and how many are status okay so you see under car for PC, uh, all of them are up, walang down. But for the LGU barangay, uh, there are nine sites that are up and one site that is down. So this is your pivot table. So ginagawa rin natin ito doon sa Excel natin. We, we, we try to, to make use of this as a, as a you know, uh, to categorize and to what's the other term segregate no? categorize and segregate the items that we have there okay and uh, that's one and of course you can make you can always make another graph that will rep represent this dito sa baba niya. and the last that i'm going to show is uh, in addition to and uh, mayroon pa pala tayong control i'm sorry in addition we also have here um, this one, this, this, 
this uh, tab here, community visualization. So in addition to the charts that are available, meron ding mga community visualizations. One of them is the gauge. So if you're going to use this gauge here, it's uh, a bit more visually appealing to the record count instead of it as a record count. I could say that this is uh, the total 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 sites. Yan lang. Extra na lang yan. Dinagdag ko na lang. Ano? So it's a gauge. So there are more like this that you can find here under this community visualization. But take note, um, it takes a lot of processing because, you know, I, um, I'm not sure if the processing is done on the server of this community. Kaya medyo mabigat siya sa processing time. Okay? Sige. And last, before we recap, last is this one. The controls. So we can have, we can add the control precisely to be able to filter further our charts. No? So... Uh, we could choose only region one and site name, and that will affect the entire um, visualization that we have here if we put here controls. Okay, so let's do that. So that is on the page one. I'm going to select everything and uh, drag this a little lower uh, to make room for my controls. And in the controls, I will have to add the control, um, drop down list, and here. Okay. That's the region. So automatic na yan, region na siya. And then the other one is add the control, drop down list, and uh, contract status. Was it con contract status? A site? No, site name pala. So site name. So I'm going to change that to site name. The control field is not contract status, but rather site name. Okay. And then um, wait, wait, I think I made the mistake. It should not be. Yeah. No, I think it's not uh no. Erase, erase. So Control, add the control. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tama pala. Tama siya. So, uh, the control field is site name. Let's see. And then change the color later. So let's run this first. So view. If I'm going to change on the region, putting region one only, click on region one only. And this will show us all the items under region one. Okay. So similarly, if you're going to choose uh, two regions, then you will have data for two regions only. Nawala dito yung nasa gitna na nasa car. And to control that further, these regions excluding car, you could do a site name. Um, ito dapat pwede ako mag-search. Eh. That's what I'm trying to show. Wait lang, give me a minute. I forgot how to do this. Um, the type of metric should be... Wait lang ah. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, because I would like to search per name. Sana. I would like to search per name. And I think on the style, it's a drag down. Let's see. Kung makakapag-search ako by name. So if I will search by name, let's say Abra only. It's capital A. Yeah, this is not what I intend to be. Anyway, sige, pasensya na, nakalimutan ko tong portion na to. Uh, so this is the controls. Number one is, uh, yeah, the purpose of the control is for you to be able to determine only a specific uh, subset of the data set. Uh, you can include in your search um, all the regions or one region only. And you could further add more controls to it by adding more data sets and be able to filter down yung ating control. No? So that searching for a specific uh, subset uh, is much, much easier with these controls. Instead of going through this uh, graph and clicking on the um, bars or the parts of the, the chart. Ah, okay. So naka-exclude ang Abra, kaya hindi makita. Yeah, thank you. I am curious already. So let me see. So nandun yung car. So if I check on Abra, yeah. So there's the Abra already. Okay, good observation. Thank you. Ayan, so nakikita ko lang yung mga Abra, Abra sites. Okay, so advanced filter. Yeah, I think so. Well, parang yun nga yata. No? Advanced filter. Ah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's advanced filter, site type. So this one, ito. So ito ang gusto kong mangyari. It's the advanced filter. Okay, so in the advanced filter is here. Take a look at this. Uh, this is a more complex, but it allows you to define. So I would like to... Ano ba yung mga nag-uumpisa? No? Nag merong abra ang umpisa. So I could say contains and then the word abra. And then... Uh, you will see from the result, or no, I think it's Abra. Bakit ba Abra yung choice ko ngayon? So regions, nawala na yung, no, not site type, it's not site type, it's a site location. So this is not site type, the control field is locality name or site name rather, sorry, site name. Yan. And view. Oh, dapat hindi na reset tayo. Reset. Site name contains the word uh, Abra. Oh, see? So I get all here uh, that are in Abra. Uh, mayroon siyang word na Abra. So, yeah. There's one location. If it's A only, and then you have more results. Anything that has an A here, and obviously a lot of them have an has an A um, word in it. So you have choices. Contains starts with uh, um, a regular expression or other com comparison. Okay. So the next step that you're going to do is to be able to uh, add more colors into it. And uh, like, for example, style, ang ginawa kasi natin, we put a background. Use the colors from your theme. And then, oops, yeah, this is, I think it's on the labels. And so similarly for your background and your text. 
Okay, so I think that's it for our first part. And I'm pretty sure this is really a very important tool, lalong lalo na sa amin dito. And my colleagues, uh, we will be using this all the time. And take note, I did demo ko sa nyo because you cannot do this. Let's say, um, right now, uh, okay, let, let me reset the data. Right now, we have 547 sites. If I'm going to add an entry here, one more entry at the very bottom of it, okay. Nag-add siya ng 1,000. My God, 1,000. One lang ang gusto ko. And add one more record, V. And then, uh, near guard house one, and HUC. So, dapat itong aking monitoring tool, magdadagdag dapat ito. But again, it needs some time to propagate the value. Okay. What I'm going to do is to refresh, click here and refresh the data, uh, hoping that I get the updated. There, you only you already have 548 sites, no? So one time mo lang gagawin ito. And then uh, the one managing your data set will simply keep on adding your records here. And your data set, which is uh, your dashboard rather, that is provided to to your subordinate uh, supervisors at least or for you alone makikita mo kung ano ang status ng inyong uh, info so you have a very good uh, glimpse of or a view of what is the story of your data set so real time siya okay and if i am going to ayun nag-add tayo no pag mag-update ka ganun din pag mag-update ka is magbabago din dapat yung values niya. So <clears throat> right now you have 532 active sites. If I will make this as uh, expired contract, height expired na lang kasi yung condition natin kanina nagbago. Eh. So 532 active sites. If I'm going to refresh my data, that should also be reflected. No? Oh, 531 na lang dumami yung, yung expired sites. Okay, so yes, and uh, let me now recap. So let us. Uh, first and foremost, yung data set natin comes with a types of structured unstructured it so happened that in this example the data set or the excel or the google sheet that was used in this example is sim it's very simple it's formatted wala siyang nahalong mga uh, merge items no inserted labels like this but if you're going to have a data set that is unstructured or semi structured it's a little bit difficult to do that and it needs cleaning data cleaning data transformation especially if you have null values maraming entries na walang value na hindi tinype uh, may extra process that is needed and uh, uh, that is actually uh, the common thing that we keep on our records yan yung mga ginagawa lalo na sa admin uh, that's how they prepare the reports uh, lahat na sa isang Excel sheet, nandun yung data, nandun yung visualization, nandun yung formatting, so that when you print it, you get the uh, you get a readable and a formatted report already. Now, since you are already aware that meron palang tool na ganito, then I will be more precautious in preparing my uh, Google Sheets. So, hindi ko na siya... I will not be merging cells. I will not be inserting this, uh, this unnecessary labels here. I will not be summarizing them by, by adding uh, portions of it. Kasi 
I am sure that as, that is uh, that there is another way of doing that by using a dashboard or using that reporting para mas malinis yung data. But nevertheless, if the spreadsheet that is given to you at uh, tutulungan mo silang gumawa ng data uh, dashboard is already like this in this uh, the unstructured, then um, by all means, no, by all means, pwede pa naman natin gawin yan. So by uh, adding more filters like excluding nulls and uh, the headers and values for it. Okay? Yan. So that's one. So that will be the second part and uh, we will be working on a more complex um, data set. Hindi katulad nitong isa na isa lang. Pangalawa, in one Excel sheet, you have multiple ano, multiple tabs here, di ba? So, bihira yung isang Excel sheet lang nandun na. So, mostly may mga tabs siya uh, separating region 1, region 2, region 3, or per course. Ganun. How are we going to interconnect them together um, using so database may primary key? Something that is unique uh, for each column. Pwede rin gawin yun is an, in an advanced um uh, presentation of the this this uh, google data studio okay and then we talk about the dashboards we talk about dimensions so ang dimension siya yung dimension is how would you like to see and what are the things that you're going to measure and metrics eto ay um, atomic value or a formula that leads you to a value whether it's a Boolean date or time. So again, make sure that in your entries, if you really intend to make it as a date, yung column mo, dapat formatted siya as a date. Hindi kung ano-ano lang tinatype nyo doon na hindi siya valid format. And if it is, if an item is answerable or represented by yes or no, gawin mo ng true or false no? Although pwede naman natin i-convert later yung yes or no para we could convert that as a, a boolean. So when it's a boolean kasi, you can add more controls like um, uh, radio buttons, no? um, checkbox. Pwede natin maglagay ng controls na ganun. So it adds more power and flexibility. Okay? So our data source is Google Sheet but not limited to you can have you can connect it directly to your uh, SQL server you can connect it directly to your Google Analytics your YouTube pwede yan diretso para makuha natin yung um, site visitors or likes and readers ng ating or viewers ng ating site okay we used Google Data Studio uh, i know this came out 2019 it's not really mature but has gone a lot of transformation since day 1 and we were able to build a dashboard where a dashboard gives us an overview. Uh, it tells us the story. It tells us the story of our um, Excel sheet that is really difficult, difficult to uh, understand kung hindi ikaw ang nag-prepare non. Okay? So, and then the data types. Meron tayong geodata. Uh, we should maximize the use of this geodata. Anything that could be represented in terms of address, let's do that as a geodata. And ah, this is our output. We do some visualization. My mga basic charts that we did, you have to choose the right um, chart for the right information that you would get. Like if you wanted to see a percentage, it's a pie pie chart but if you want to see details you use bar chart and uh okay and then we did also drill down and drill up so meaning um you could categorize it by region but you could drill down to a low a more detailed one for province and you could actually have more drill down unlimited drill down as long as uh, magkakakonek yung ating uh, data okay and then we talk about custom formulas. Marami pang formula, but you see, just two formula, concat and if. Marami ka nang magagawa. How much more if you're going to learn the other um, custom formulas that are available? These are the same formulas you have in Excel. So if you have done 
um, simple formulas in Excel, uh, easy PC lang ito. Okay. And of course, uh, as Jay Bear said, we are surrounded by data but starved for insights. So meaning, if you only have rows and columns, enormous amount of rows and columns and figures, and you look at it, wala ka namang makikitang information, wala, wala kang magagrasp na insight coming from that. So that's why um, the trend, no? hindi lang ngayon, mat matagal na to, na the trend is actually to represent your data in figures and graphs and do some analytics no? for, for stakeholders and for managers and for our boss para mas maging meaningful and for each and everyone to make a um, high value decision. So with that, thank you very much for attending and I hope to see you again in the next uh, part of this uh, that will be announced later. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat and happy uh, National ICT Month to all. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Ayan. Uh, we thank you, Sir Alan, uh, for uh, sharing uh, with us your expertise in uh, data analytics using Google Data Studio. Ayan. So uh, in this uh, session, we were able to uh, use uh, our Google uh, Data Sheet and uh, our Excel files. And uh, we use a tool called uh, the Google Data Studio to make uh, data analytics report to a dashboard. And this will be really helpful for us uh, at work. Uh, this will be uh, make uh, this will make our work more productive and more efficient and will help us uh, arrive or make better decisions. Ayan. Okay, so before we move on to closing the session, may I ask uh, everyone to turn on uh, your cameras for uh, photo ops. Yeah, and don't forget the attendance. Huh? I think uh, the yes, attendance. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Attendance so that uh, you get your certificates for this. Let's put uh, evaluation, okay. sir. Yeah, come on. Let's see, everyone. Yes, sir. Sir, pa. Okay. Yeah, uh, stop, na. stop share yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Okay, so keep smiling lang po, no? as I uh, take a, a screen capture of this. All right. Smile po tayo in three, two, one. Ayan. Okay, so give me a second. Next page. Sorry, so sa so next page po natin, walang naka-on yung camera. Ayan, so... Ayan, okay na. So thank you yeah. so much for those who opened their cameras. Alright. So for the next... Uh, Part po, no? uh, I'm going to share with you the link for the attendance. Ayan. Okay, so the attendance form uh, can be accessed through this link. Can you just type it on the, paste it on the yes, chat sir. na lang, ano, uh, Jing? Uh, hindi siya nakabitli eh. Okay, so the link is already uh, sent here on the chat box. Ayan. So make sure that uh, you input uh, your names correctly 
since this will be the basis for uh, the preparation of your certificates. All right. So, yeah, it's already there. So, okay. So just a reminder, uh, if you want to join us in our celebration of our 2022 National ICT Month, uh, you may uh, use the hashtags, hashtag NICT Month 2022 or National ICT Month 2022 or hashtag uh, 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 sorry, our theme, hashtag so Sparks, Strengthen and Sustain. Ayan. And if you want to know more about other trainings that uh, we will be conducting uh, for uh, this month, uh, please follow our page, the ICT Cordillera Administrative Region. Ayan. So this has been a very productive session and uh, thank you for coming uh, in today's session and we hope to see you again uh, on our next trainings. And this has been Jane Pino, your facilitator for today. Uh, good afternoon and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, you. bye everyone. Bye. Sir Alan, thank you. Welcome. Bye, thank sir. You. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.